so as mentioned, I'm joined by Matt Kelly, a uh, good friend of the show and a uh, good friend of mine who uh, is working on a game, Mole Men Must Die. I said that correctly, didn't I? Yes, that's the one. So um, basically, you have put that game up on uh, Steam Greenlight, which now mm -hmm. no longer exists. So what, what, do, what does that actually mean for you and your game? Yeah, it's been a, um, I mean, you know, it's kind of one of those things that's needed to change a lot for a long time. Uh, you know, you, but you can't help but kind of feel like, oh, couldn't have you just put it off for maybe just a little bit longer? Um, for the immediate future, though, uh, the new change to Steam Direct, um, it doesn't come into effect uh, for a little while still. Uh, so for us, it means we're still going through, uh, you know, we're hopefully going to get through before, uh, you know, Steam Direct and possible fees come in. But uh, yeah, for the moment, uh, we're just uh, trekking along, real. So, so like regarding, so obviously, you know, the, the, the main kind of methods for the game at the moment are you, you make a Kickstarter or you, you know, provide an early access or you go Steam Direct. Like they're kind of the main three, I would say, avenues for indie development. Like, do you think that direct is going to have a, like a direct uh, uh, effect on how that works, or do you think it's just going to be one of those things that Valve does, what Valve wants, kind of thing? Yeah, it's um, I mean, it's not a new model. Like, we've seen it happen already before with uh, like the Apple App Store for uh, you know a long time. Uh, just getting started with development actually cost you money, uh, so. You know, it's not a new unheard of model and people have done, um, you know, plenty of great things on it. Um, I just am not 100% sure it's going to, you know, necessarily solve the problems that it's trying to solve. Uh, you know, because essentially it doesn't matter what you make the fee, like currently they're throwing around, you know, anywhere between $100 and $5,000. Uh, there's always going to be someone uh, with, uh, an idea that's not properly thought through and a whole lot of money to splash. Uh, so, you know, those it's not going to, um, you know, necessarily curb anything in particular. Uh, it, it's not going to raise the quality of the, the products going up. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say so. But on the flip side, what it will allow is uh, products that, you know, may be interesting um, to a smaller group of people to get through easier. And that kind of, that side of things is actually quite cool. Uh, you know, there's tons of stuff out there that has, you know, niche audiences that we uh, don't hear a ton about. And there's gonna be stuff that's even below that with an even smaller audience um, that will just, you know, it will never appear in a news article, but there will maybe be, you know, 50 or 100 people out there who are like, that's my jam. And they're gonna be really excited about that. And I guess that's probably the, 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 the concern around that kind of stuff is obviously Kickstarter's coming off the boil uh, compared to what it was. You know, Green mm. is obviously changing in the way that it is. Um, early access, well, we've all seen Rust, um, where you don't necessarily have to release a game to release paid DLC. Like, <laughs> are we concerned that there is, it's going to limit the opportunities for you know, people like yourself who are doing the, you know, living the indie dream, as you said yourself? Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it's too early to say, I think. Uh, in terms of, you know, like if the fee comes in at a hundred dollars, if you know, if you can't scrounge up a hundred dollars to, uh, you know, which is what, like one hundred and twenty Australian, give or take. Um, you know, if you can't scrounge that up to uh, get your game on Steam, um, you know, that's probably going to be actually the least of your problems. Uh, yeah. You know, whether it's uh, you know, getting marketing support or, you know, licensing music or, you know, there's a whole bunch of costs that come into uh, game development, even at an indie dream level. Um, so, you know, if we're talking at that end of the spectrum, um, you know, it's probably not going to be a big deal for a lot of people. Uh, where it will become problematic, though, is like, you know, if uh, you have to, you know, front a thousand dollars or uh five thousand um, dollars you know at that point the you know you may be working like a part-time job to you know support your development or uh you know be developing in the evening uh you may have considerable other expenses like uh you know like family or you know just general life stuff 
Um, and at that point, it starts becoming like it's a significant amount of your income that you have to be able to put aside to then get through Steam. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why I say it's too early to say. Well, it goes from being, um, you know, a moderate inconvenience to potentially I don't pay rent to this, you know what I mean? Like Exactly, yeah. Yeah, like, if, you know, if we were to have to, uh, you know, front, uh, you know, probably even, you know, maybe just, let's say, a thousand, um, that would be a significant problem for us. Uh, you know, something like, if it came down, it was like 250, 500, you know, not great, but okay. Uh, but, you know, once you start getting into four digits, it's like... Well, not sure what I'm going to do for food this month, but, uh, you know, got to get my game on Steam. Well, that's, yeah, you know, uh, the Omega are still pretty cheap, but <laughs> I, I, I guess in the specific example for you guys, so it's obviously Mole Man Must Die, um, indie game, up on Steam, Greenlight. Um, you know, is, at what point does it become, you know, obviously you're making the game that you want to make, the cool little premise, you know, um, yeah. you've got to take a bomb to the center of the earth to, you know, kill all Mole Men. Yeah, to, right. to avenge your uh, your temper tantrum president with no reference to current politics. Yeah, at all. not at all. Not <laughs> um, yeah, is is it that case of you know, um, do you then have to consider the potential as opposed to making the game you want to make, you then have to consider how do I sell this to a you know, middleman slash publisher, or how <laughs> do I sell it on Steam Greenlight, or, or, or sell it to um, Valve more than necessarily, you know, I get to make the game I want to make. Yeah, like, I mean, I think those questions are always going to come up, uh, you know, even in the green light process, uh, you know, how we're talking to people about the game and, uh, you know, how we get people on board with the game is, um, you know, that's a constant question on our mind and that's, uh, you know, that's not going to change, uh, you know, regardless of green light or fees or whatever, like, you know, those, those are always sort of like really important considerations. Uh, you know, what it... Uh, kind of does affect is, is um, you know, how quickly do you actually need to see a return on that? Like, if you know, if you've invested, like, you know, let's let's say, worst case scenario, the fee's $5,000, you've invested that, how quickly do you need to see that money back? Yeah. Uh, and at that point, um, you know, it's like another, it's another cost that you have to uh, make back. And the Steam Direct uh, system, uh, that they've been talking about, you know, you recoup, uh, you will recoup the money uh, from uh, the cut the valve normally takes, uh, which is great, but it's still, you know, a chunk of money that you, you're concerned about how you'll make back and how quickly. Yeah, no, and, and that's absolutely fair. I, I guess, um, you know, realistically, that's that's really covered a lot of what I'm going to cover with Greenlight, but let's do the, the 90 second elevator position. All men must sure. die. 90 second elevator pitch, go. Yep. Okay, so Mormon Must Die is a, uh, a game about delivering a bomb to the center of the earth uh, to get revenge on the Mormon for your temper tantrum president who has been insulted by them. Uh, so you'll travel through uh, a whole bunch of different worlds of this underground kingdom while literally like a stupid amount of enemies are being hurled at you. Uh, like it's a pointless, pointless number amount. Uh, and really the game is about, uh, you know, protection and crowd control. So, you know, particularly like games like, uh, you know, we, we take uh, inspiration from lots of really uncommon sources for the genre. So, you know, when we're talking about crowd control, we're really looking at games like, uh, like Dead Rising, for example, which is about, you know, taking ground and just controlling crowds and, uh, you know, just trying to uh, hang in there while you del deliver this monumental bomb to the centre of the earth. Ah, oh, look at that. Look, like you've practiced it before you... <laughs> before this. Matt, thank you very much for your time. Look forward to seeing you back in Civilization when you come back to Melbourne next. No worries. Thank and you very much. Cheers, mate. All right, cheers.